Who is King Jahad? We know that he is the king of the tower, but what beyond that? Well, to go any further, we need to talk about the comic, not just the anime. So let me warn you exactly what type of content, what type of spoilers are going to be in this video. So, firstly, I will not be talking about anything that is going to happen in the series next. From a timeline perspective, I won't be talking about any events that happen after Season 1. I will, however, be talking about events that have happened in the past. And this information isn't available in the anime yet. This information will only be available later. Now, shall we start? How much do you know about Jahad, the king of this tower? The story of Bam is one thing, but the story of Jahad or more specifically, Jahad and the Tower, begins over 10,000 years ago. We don't know much about Jahad before he entered the Tower, but we do know that he and the ten great family leaders were irregulars, just like Bam. They came from outside the Tower. Now, let that amount of time just sink in for a moment. Over 10,000 years ago, in human history, we hadn't even started using copper yet. Not properly, anyway. Paper wasn't a thing, writing wasn't a thing. The world population is estimated to have been less than 5 billion, and now it is 7.6 billion. Jahad has been the king of the tower for around 10,000 years. His empire is gigantic, his family and the ten great families have become enormous. But hey, we're getting ahead of ourselves. The tower predates all of this. The tower predates Jahad and the ten great family leaders. They entered the tower, and they ascended the tower floor by floor, just like how we see the regulars doing nowadays. Although, there were some big differences back then. Now, we know a few things about Jahad's journey up the tower. For example, we know that he and the great family leaders boarded something that is known as the Hal Train, which is a unique train that travels, I believe, from the 35th floor up to either the 44th or the 45th floor, stopping at stations along the way. It is a faster way of ascending the tower than just doing it normally floor by floor, and the train holds many secrets. Interestingly, it is said that the Hal train was actually created for Jahad and his companions for them to train in and become stronger. But we don't know who made the Hal train. Perhaps the administrators did? Perhaps Jahad and his companions made them? Or perhaps the workshop made them. You see, there is one particular being aboard the Hal Train called the God of Guardians, and he helped Jahad become so powerful. Interestingly, the author has said that this being is a creation of the workshop, so it could be that the Hal Train was also made by the workshop. Now, we know that the God of Guardians helped Jahad to find his true self, and according to the God of Guardians, Jahad gave in to the power that he found inside himself. Although, in Jahad's own words, when he found his true self, he realised that, whether he likes it or not, it was his destiny to become king. Interestingly, Jahad and his companions never reached the true top of the tower. In fact, as far as we know, no one has. What the people in the tower call the top of the tower is actually the 134th floor. You see, this is the last floor that Jahad conquered. Now, we know that Jahad made a contract, or perhaps multiple contracts, with an administrator, or perhaps all the administrators, to become the king of the tower. And this also made him immortal, as did the ten great family leaders. Although whether this happened on the 134th floor, or before, we are not sure. The tower beyond the 134th floor, though, was sealed away. Sealed by a key that Jahad split into separate pieces. We don't know why he stopped on that floor, perhaps he wasn't powerful enough to go beyond, or perhaps there is another reason. However, there were two people that disagreed with Jahad sealing the floors above away. Two people other than the ten great family heads that also came from outside the tower and ascended it with Jahad. A woman, Arlene Grace, with whom Jahad was in love with, and a man who we only know as B, who Arlene was in love with. They were all once companions, but these two rebelled against Jahad and his empire, and they formed an organisation to fight it, to fight him, in order to get the key. However, they lost, and they were forced into hiding. Jahad, though, managed to hunt down Arlene Grace, 
who was immortal and had had a child with a V by then. The child, however, was not immortal, and Jahad killed her child in front of her, which is said to have driven her insane. Now B, for some reason, was not immortal. Perhaps he didn't make a contract with the administrators. And he did what Arlene couldn't. Out of grief, he killed himself. But what would become of Arlene after this? Well, unfortunately, that is not a part of Jahad's story. That is a story for perhaps a different video. Now, after this, Jahad and the ten great families would rule over the tower. They were all immortals. And after a 10,000 year legacy, they are like gods to the inhabitants of the tower. The next part of Jahad's story involves the princesses of Jahad. You see, he could not have children, and it is said that he could not have children because of his powerful blood. So, Po Bidao Gastang, or maybe Pao Bidao, Pao Bidao, head of the Pao Bidao family, suggested something to Jahad. He suggested that Jahad choose powerful children from the ten great houses and gradually inject them with his blood, which would make them more powerful and he would make them compete with each other so that perhaps one of them would become strong enough to bear him a child. Now it is said that whoever collects all 13 of the 13th month needles would become Jahad's wife. And yet, perhaps through Jahad's will, there is a system in place to stop that from ever happening. So perhaps Jahad doesn't even want a wife. And yet he still allows this competition, this killing, between the princesses to happen. And yet Jahad does have a family, but it is not a blood family, because he cannot have children. He has a gigantic family of people adopted into his name, a bigger family than any of the ten great families, which are gigantic themselves. Now all princesses, it should be noted, take on the name of Jahad, and they also are part of his family. At some point during his rule, he went into a deep slumber or some kind of hibernation, and he left his empire to be ruled by the three lords. These three lords take turns in ruling the tower every 1,000 years. Now, we don't know why Jahad went into this long, long sleep, or perhaps it is something to do with being so powerful and living for such a long time. Now, that almost brings us to the current time, except for one crazy event that happened. You see, Jahad, despite being the king and the god of the tower, and renowned as the greatest being, is only ranked as number three in power. Now who could be ranked more powerful than him? One of these beings is an all-powerful creature known as Phantominium. This being also came from outside the tower. Apparently, it slaughtered its way through Jahad's household and royal guard, and is said to have met with the dormant king. Although we don't know what happened with their meeting, but we do know that afterwards, Phantominium left and was never seen again. Now that brings us to the current day Tower of God. However, there is more information that we do know about Jahad, not necessarily about his past, but about his unique powers. One of these strange powers seems to be his ability to foresee and manipulate fate and destiny itself. There are people within the tower who can see into the future, and these people either can't see anything involving Jahad, or perhaps what they see is manipulated by Jahad. You see, there was one such person that had a vision, and Jahad was somehow aware of it, and through his actions, that future changed. So either he knew about it, and then changed the future, or he manipulated the person's visions to begin with. He himself has stated that he can see all causes and effects, and that he found out how to play around with fate. Other than that particularly intriguing ability, he is also pretty much completely overpowered in all other areas. Shinso manipulation, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and even with a sword. He also seems to have some kind of monster inside him, or at least he himself calls it a monster. Some mysterious creature that extrudes red coiling tentacles from inside him that can be used to attack people although we do not know exactly what this is. And there we go. This is everything we know so far about the godlike king called Jahad, who has ruled the tower for 10,000 years or so. Unless I have missed 
some other slightly smaller details, but I think I have covered all the major points. Now we are sure to learn more as the series goes forward, and when we do, perhaps I'll make a part 2 of this video. Until then, however, if you enjoyed this video, let me know what you guys want me to talk about next. Perhaps the 10 Great Families, or the Princesses of Jahad, or I could talk about the Power Rankers, the Power Rankings, how they work, and who the most powerful creatures in the tower are. Or I could even talk about the mysterious Urek Messino who has been mentioned about once in the anime thus far. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to make a video about next. Until then, thank you for watching. I've enjoyed making this. Hell, I've enjoyed making all of my Tower of God videos so far. It's an amazing series that I really, really love to talk about. And it's got such a huge and epic lore behind it. Until next time, regulars.